Okay guys and girls, it's Hughes Name Kate and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm riding Triumphs 2023 Speed Twin 1200. Now the bike looks pretty bonny, pardon the pun, and I'm going to take it out and tell you guys what I think about it. So if you're interested in that, then stick around, keep watching, I'll play the intro and I'll be back. Sounds all right, doesn't she? Right, guys and girls. Oh, the grunt, the talk. Oh, she's talking. Now, I know, I know, I'm late. I'm late to the game. This is my first time ever on a speed twin and it came out in 2019. I am a bad vlogger. Wow, look at the views, look at the views. Okay guys, so as mentioned, I am so late to the speed twin 1200 game. The bike came out in 2019 and looked a fair bit different from how it looks now. So it got an upgrade in 2021. Flash forward to 2023 and I'm finally on it. So since I haven't ridden the 2019 one, I can't really compare it for you guys because the truth is I just don't know how it rode. However, from a theoretical point of view, I can tell you that this model got forged pistons, it got upgraded internals, it got different cams, lighter crank. So yeah, there was a few changes to make this bike what it is. Not to mention forks. So now we've got upside down Mazokis. Whereas the last one had gaiters, you know, them little rubbery covers over the forks, the conventional forks. Got different brakes, M50 calipers. Remember, I'm on the block M50s on this, which is nice. So yeah, my first time, my first time riding a Speed Twin. I haven't actually really ridden many of the modern retros. I haven't, I haven't had chance to go on the Kawasaki Z 900 RS, which I know a lot of people pit against this bike. But guys, you got to bear with me. I'm adding to my repertoire all the time, my list of bikes I've ridden. And with the more bikes I ride, the more I can compare and contrast for people that might not have the opportunity to ride, you know, competing models back to back, or they might not have dealership availability locally, all that stuff. I will say, if you want to see this bike in more detail, more close up, do feel free to watch my walk around video where I do cover this bike in a fair bit of detail. But yeah, I just wanna ride it today and report back to you guys what I think about it. Now, I rode the Thruxton RS. Hang on. Are you okay? Yeah, no, but yeah I'm just testing myself. Ah, fair enough. I'll, I'll love you and leave you. Oh, he's only setting up his sat nav, that's all good. You know, being quite local, if a biker has any trouble, we've got a van. Mike's a very resourceful human, but he's all good, he's just setting up his nav. Ooh, the sound, it sounds so good, like, yeah, real fruity, sounds real fruity. Parallel twin as well. Like, I don't know what it is, it's um, it's just got a proper rumble to it, and I like it. Everything's going parallel twin in the world, isn't it? So, at least this one sounds so good, like real rumbly, really fruity, really nasty. Ooh, she sounds nasty. Mm. 
So yeah, we're working with 98.6 brake horsepower and 112 newton meters of torque. Now from first impressions, jumping on this bike, I want to say that is what is immediately evident to me. It's the torque. This bike is capable of ripping your arms out of your sockets. <laughs> like, when I jumped on it, I thought, oh, just give it a bit in first and second. Did not expect that. Maybe it's because I've forgotten what it was like to ride the Thruxton. Because, you know, I forget what I've had for breakfast. Never mind what bike I was lucky enough to ride <laughs> a few months prior. That's just the way my dory brain works. Hopefully you'll have watched Finding Nemo to get that reference. <laughs> So yeah, what is immediately evident is that torque. It is the wow factor. I'm hoping that I can find some twisties so that we can, you know, get a bit of a hustle on and see what it's like. Oh, sounds great, sounds great. Early, baby. Right, let's see what we're working with. So it weighs 212 kilograms and you know it feels it feels fine when you're riding it. It doesn't feel super lightweight but again quite like the Thruxton RS it does lead to a very planted and stable feeling on the road. We've got great rubber on this as standard We've got some Metzl and Racetech RRs. We've also got a freaking truck taking up all of the road. Oh, that view there is gorgeous. It seems like this has all been resurfaced. This is wicked. <laughs> we have a Scirocco that was gonna we're gonna bomb in and overtake, but then realise that the road is a bit narrow. I'll stay out for him. Ugh. Yes, if I recall, it goes quite tight here. Oh, look at this! So with no quick shifter or blipper, but a fake quick shifter works quite well. Just shutting off the throttle for a split second. Oh, yeah, it's been resurfaced. This is bloody lovely. Especially combined with those views. What more could you want? Right, the road gets quite narrow here. So, let's calm ourselves. Let's simmer down, sunshine. Whew. Yeah, so to carry on what I was saying, it handles, it's a satisfying ride because, because it's not quite so point and shoot or quite as nosy as, you know, something like a, a street triple or something like that, you know, another more nosy vehicle in the Triumph range. You do feel like you've got to work it on the country lanes, but it is deeply satisfying. But very smooth, very torque it, very capable. Back brake is brilliant. Front brake is good. It's it's not got a bite so aggressive that you know it kind of shocks you. It, it's almost you know it's quite progressive, but it's still quite firm, affirmative in its stopping power. Suspension seems great for me. That's the thing, it's always hard for me to comment on the suspension side of things. Usually if anything I find it a little bit hard because I'm, you know, I don't really weigh probably the same weight as the average rider. So I feel like I'm not the best person to give my opinion on um, 
I'm not the best person to give my opinion on suspension, I don't think. Because whenever I get on bikes, like stock a suspension that they have, like without tweaking or twiddling, I can usually get on with really, really well. I feel like if you weigh, you know, like, it's telling me I'm indicating. <laughs> that's another thing it doesn't have self-cancelling indicators <laughs> what a guy I'd high five him if I saw him yeah so no self-cancelling indicators which when you're quite forgetful or you're just so used to self-cancelling indicators it's a bit annoying but it is what it is suspension I don't find it too bad I don't find it too crashy I find it quite nice at absorbing the bumps Another thing I quite like, I really, really enjoy the dash. I love it. I think it's just so nice. It's not overcomplicated. I know everybody thinks that I need a TFT in my life always, but that's not true. You know, I can appreciate a well-working, nice and clear analog slash LCD display. I'm not a heathen. Oh no, I've just ri realised I've been riding it in rain mode and you know what, I know why. So, this isn't the first time I've ridden this bike, it's my first impressions, but I rode it going to Dronfield to visit Supreme Coat for their VIP day and one of the things that I kind of felt like I noticed was a bit of a snatch in the throttle. Now, I've been riding it now and I was just thinking, was I smoking the crack? Because the throttle seems absolutely fine, like blissful in fact. And I look down and I just realise I'm in rain mode. Now rain mode still gives me all the power, but it does dilute, water down, soften the throttle response. So I'm just going to pull over here, just have a look. So mode, road, so we'll put it in sport for a bit, saying as we're about to go over a honker of a road, a disgusting road, <laughs> which should be good. A nice little nationale. So we'll see if I still keep the opinion on the throttle, being a bit lively. me bumping out my seat. So yeah, he's not mega springy. The suspension is not mega springy. Which is good when you do like to chuff on a bit. Very bumpy this road. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Sounds nice when you wind it on. Sound is quite an important factor for a lot of people. Ooh. Feel like it's just come on, no drama. Oh, it sounds so good. It feels like it is quite a weight to throw around, to be quite honest. But that's because it is. No, she's not the lightest girl. But the torque is pretty nice, pretty nice indeed. It's kind of weird because it feels... It, it's a weird bike to want to like hoon around on. Like a modern retro. Brakes are... yeah they stop you. Let's commit. Oh, the views here are stunning. It's not a road that I really want to go all that fast on because you can just see so much beautiful scenery. But yeah, the brakes are very good. Very good. Let's put it in fourth, third. Just gently tickle it round here. Oh, pick up. Pick 
hiccup's great because the talk's uh, it's mouthy. So yeah, it's one of them nice kind of well equipped, you ready? Oh, horrible bump that. Is he well equipped and capable? Modern retro. It can be the perfect plodder if you want it to be. Or especially with this rubber on, on a nice dry day, it can certainly pick its feet up, put a shift in, and you come home satisfied. So yeah. It's good, it's good. I like it, I like it. Easy. Job done. And I might do a little battery change just whilst I am here. Okay guys, so there she is. A nice little look at her. I think she looks rather aesthetically pleasing. Nice lines, everything's nice and compact in there. You know, I like how the tank follows straight on to the seat. We've got that lovely parallel twin that just sits there looking proud. Nice enough wheels, look like there could be a bit of a bugger to clean. But we got some good rubber, we got some Mizoki front suspension, we got some pretty basic Barry looking shocks at the back. It'd be kind of cool if they did an RS version of this, so like all ins and you know maybe a little bit more horsepower. But to be fair, can't complain. It's a fun bike. It is a fun bike. I'm quite enjoying it. So I'm going to head back that way. I'm going to chill out on the ride, not go wild. And I'm going to see if I do actually remember the throttle being a little bit snatchy in sport mode when going slow. So I'm going to change my battery and then we're going to carry on. Bear with me. All right, batteries are changed. We've tried to ride it like a sports bike. Now we're going to try and ride it as intended. Like a little modern retro cruiser. Wonderful. Sneaky little shortcut. Because if bikes weren't meant to get through, they'd put the bollards closer together. That is my theory and I'm sticking with it, okay? Oh, I've got hip cramp. Oh, I've got hip cramp. Oh, I've got hip cramp. Right. Just let me try and rid myself of cramp first. Oh, ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Ouch. Does anybody else struggle with hip cramp or is it just me? Plagued with the bloody thing. I've got it in sport mode. I'm just trying to figure out whether I think that the throttle's a bit snatchy. Because I'm not going to lie, I've seen a few speed twin reviews. This is before I even got the bike and it was even on my agenda. Because I, I normally like to avoid watching reviews on things that I'm taking out. Because I want a completely uninfluenced opinion. But one of the things people said was that the throttle was really smooth but... To me it's one of them throttles where in sport mode it's almost a bit surgy in sport mode on the throttle in my opinion like once it's singing it's really not a drama or a trouble in that it's getting a bit chilly and these are tyres that do like to be warm. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to stick to what I say about it. If you're an owner and you disagree with me, please will you let me know in the comments. Well, yeah, it's a pleasant bike to ride. It's a real nice bike to ride. It's got plenty poke. It's got enough power. You know, almost 100 brake horsepower, so it's it's not a terrible amount, it's good for our speed limits. If 
Bra Roads. Very, very bumpy. Very, very bumpy indeed. Woo! But we do all right. Right, we're coming into a 30 now. So, get right down. Right down. Let's see how it behaves when we do the speed limit. So we're doing 30. We're in sport. So I'm in third gear now. I'm just trundling along. Doing speed limit. Yeah, it's not, it's not fueled terribly. I think it could be a little bit better though. I think it could be a smidge better. But yeah, so far, cracking bike. It's nice and low, 809 mil of a seat height, so super manageable when I have to come to a stop. I've got a nice firm foot down, which is just really nice to have, to be quite frank with you. It's just real nice. But yeah, it's definitely a feel-good bike. It's a feel-good bike. With very little electronics on it, no heat grips, cruise control, quick shifter, auto blipper. Absolutely no radar technology. <laughs> Nothing like that. But, it's a modern retro. You've got to keep the element of the retro in, haven't you? Even if you make it a bit modern. And you make it quite modern and nice with you know, the suspension and the brakes. I think as long as you've got the performance elements in there, all the other fancy spandangly features come secondary to me. It's how it rides, which is is a thing we're looking for. We want a good ride. And I would say it's a good ride. A very good ride. So we'll go back up here. Not a very nice bend to have to negotiate, but we did it. Whoa. Okay, this is quite tight. Never ride faster than your vision allows. But yeah, I'm enjoying this bike. What did I prefer, this or the Thruxton? Even though I feel like I would be able to do a lot longer stints in the saddle in this bike. I don't know, there's just something really charming about the Thruxton that I really, really like. And don't get me wrong, this is a very, very, oh, it doesn't like sixth gear going that slow. Poor thing. And don't get me wrong, this is a, it's a very nice looking machine. The lines are sleek. It looks well put together. We've got wonderful Triumph build quality. I don't think it quite, the model pulls at my heartstrings as much as the Thruxton. Like the back end of that bike, the Thruxton RS. Oh, sheesh. I could just stop and stare at it all day. It's just got the best beauty. And I, I do like the back end of this as well, with that little scrambler-esque fender thing that's going on. And we carried over that lovely dash, so I can't complain. It's a very nice bike. A very nice bike indeed. I think it's priced quite nicely. Like 11795 for this black model. I think it's priced very, very nicely for what you get. Oh, that's not good. We can go, we can go. Uh oh. I think you may have an issue, sir. I hate to be the one to tell you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my little first impressions on the Speed Twin 1200. First impressions are, it's a really nice bike. It's just a nice, pleasant bike to ride. It rides well, that engine is awesome. And I just like it. I like it a lot. So guys, okay, 
guys what do you make of the Speed Twin 1200? Let me know your thoughts and feelings on it. Have you ridden it? Do you own one? Do you like it? Do you love it? Have you ridden the 2019 model before it got its little update in 2021? How does it compare? The more knowledge you can put in my comments box, the more it can help the community as a whole when people are just trying to make decisions on what to buy. Because there's so much choice out there that it can get a bit bamboozling. And if you've got genuine, unbiased, honest reviews from owners or people that have test ridden bikes, then it's just helpful. So yeah, sound off in the comments below. Right, on that note guys, I'll love you and leave you. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please consider hitting that subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. Bye.